The Paid to Play Podcast. Shana of Ever After Parties. By PC Portal Pad, you're listening to Paid to Play. I'm Rob Farker, your host for this weekly exploration of the dangerous idea of bringing your voice up. Special tips that you worry make you seem silly, geeky, or odd. It's your income generating life is the best thing you can do. It might not be easy, but it's easier than we think and even fear, and I want to show you how. In every odd numbered episode of this weekly show, I chat with a career crazy, an income iconoclast, someone who has taken the things she loves to do, recognized that other people value the products or skills of her play, and then stood by that value and asked for and received financial reward. If you've been listening to my show lately, you will know that I have been chatting with a fair few cosplayers. These are incredible folks who have taken their love of pop culture and turned it into a combination of costume making and performance art. Now, each of them has found a varied way of getting paid to cosplay, but I am privileged pardon me, privileged to chat with someone who has started a whole business based around not just cosplaying herself, but also getting fellow cosplayers on board. Shana is the founder and operator of Ever After Parties. It is based out of Brisbane and it involves getting cosplayers together for children's parties dressed up as princesses from major pop culture properties that I am sure people of all ages will be familiar with. Uh, It's one heck of a gig, uh, especially when it comes to keeping uh, frenetically energetic youngsters entertained and happy, and I have no doubt it must take quite a bit of a toll on one's vocal cords, especially with all of the musical numbers that princesses are expected to come out with nowadays. But it's hard to imagine a more joyous experience that when a whole bunch of children look at you for the first time, and instead of seeing you every day uh, done up in great hair and makeup in a costume, but a real life magical princess and it is one of the reasons why i'm glad to be chatting with shana about creating this incredible venture for this episode shana thank you very much for your time and welcome to the show oh thank you (laughs) so uh you are a cosplayer yourself of course that's right yes so when did you discover the joy of cosplay oh um look back at this i believe i was in oh a grade four i believe i was in grade four i was nine years old Mm -hmm. and i believe that's when i watched uh my first animes of course you know when we're younger we watched probably about card captor sakura or naruto or sailor moon because that's what was in Mm. um but that was probably when i first officially introduced myself to anime and i didn't see anime as just a cartoon i saw it as for what it was it was anime there were two different things and i finally that's when i began to differentiate them um so that was when i first found out about anime and then towards the end of that year that's when i first cosplayed and i think it was in grade five or six i started making costumes for that rather than just purchasing them i believe i cosplayed uh konata from lucky star i cosplayed miku from vocaloid as as many females would and i believe i also did misa from death note at one stage as well because you know the very generic cosplays at the start uh but then as i got older i started going more into disney cosplays so, um, what was it about the Disney style cosplays that uh, you suddenly found so attractive, as opposed to uh, uh, anime, which is, of course, over the last couple of decades exploded uh, on the Western scene? I mean, I remember my first exposure, uh, perhaps maybe a little bit earlier uh, than you, was in high school, and of course, it was at the time uh, the big thing was Akira, which kind of oh yes, blew my <laughs> socks off. 
Um, so yeah, uh, how why the uh, the transition in focus from uh, anime in general and more toward Disney? Oh, um, that was probably around the time I was in grade six or seven. I finally jumped onto DeviantArt. I found out about that. Mm. Uh, thank God for the love of cosplay. Um, I jumped onto DeviantArt and, oh, who was it? Skirts. I came across a, uh, artist called Skirts. That's Skirts with a triple Z at the end. And that was probably in about grade eight, I believe. And she did a lot of Disney art. Uh, and then I started finding all the Disney artists on DeviantArt, and as a child, I was completely obsessed with Disney. I did have a mm-hmm. mermaid at my third or fourth birthday party as well, uh. <laughs> and it was a birthday party completely dedicated to Ariel. I was in love with her, and I guess sort of finding those <laughs> that art again kind of it rekindled my love yeah. <laughs> for the Disney, so I guess that's sort of where it ended up. So it wasn't a chance encounter with a movie. It was uh, literally through um, your interest in cosplay that sort of drew you back into Disney. Oh, yes. <laughs> I believe that's where, that's where my parents believe it came from. They think that that booking, making that booking for my birthday, having the character there, they believe that's where it started. <laughs> uh, at least uh, you have a very powerful childhood memory there to uh, draw on and base your business around you you know um, the product that you're selling and how it makes your age group feel because you were right there yourself back when you were four. Oh yes it's a fantastic feeling especially when you've got someone that it's just you kind of look up to them and you're so inspired by them and it, you would give anything to meet the real one you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fantastic feeling, and especially when you've got all your friends invited to your party to share their experience with you, and you, of course you've got all these games and activities, and it's just such a surreal feeling for the kids. They they seem to be, at first they're very much in denial, of course, as you would be. Oh, what? My, my favourite hero is here? Or oh, my favourite princess? No way! Why would they come to my party? <laughs> so it's a very surreal experience for the children, and mm. that first 10 minutes of when you're meeting them is the first 10 minutes that count those 10 minutes count the most because that's when you make the impression on the child and that's sort of where they go hmm is this real i'm in denial oh am i am i going to enjoy this am i going to go hide under a table and yes i have had kids hide under a table <laughs> um <laughs> but then eventually they do warm up to you and and that that all varies on your performance abilities mm. if you're not if you're not comfortable in your character and you're not um if you don't know your character like the back of your hand, the children do know, and, you know, they're not comfortable unless you're comfortable, of course. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Uh, now, uh, with cosplay, a lot of the time, the focus does tend to be a little bit more on uh, the love of the medium expressed through craftsmanship in the dress, and performance uh, to it takes a little bit of a back seat, but... From the sounds of things, especially when you're doing a children's party, as you've just mentioned, uh, performance is a uh, an equal factor as to look at, as much as looking the part is. Uh, what sort of performance background did you or do you have? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I the very first thing I did um, that brought me into this world was I was three years old and I started dancing and I started with jazz dancing I believe a little bit of ballet as well Um, and then I won my first award when I was four Uh, that sort of gave me the confidence you know to try and pursue sort of things like that and get into it I really enjoyed dancing and it wasn't more so of a serious thing as you would see in most ballet classes I would be the student that would be standing at the front mucking around you know kicking her legs around being silly and everything but then when it all came down to it I knew the dance I was you know uh I seemed focused even though (laughs) <laughs> all other times they seem to be you know having having just fun um and then I sort of took a back seat for a while we we moved away from where I lived and then I didn't I didn't really dance for a while but then when I was about 10 to see how the lineup with cosplay and my performances um, when I was about 10 I started to get into all of it again and I started taking formal lessons again at the age of 12 12 I believe I took 
musical theatre. That was my very first um, formal lesson at my new dance school. I had such a love for musical theatre, and it wasn't just the dancing, it was also singing and acting mixed together. Mm. Uh, that's probably <laughs> uh, probably helped. Um, and then I got into ballet, and I went into tap, tap dancing as well. Um, but after a while, you know, that kind of faded away, and I fell more into singing, and I started taking formal singing lessons. Uh, so I... I've taken formal singing lessons for musical theatre and classical vocal training. Um, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm still new to all of this, and mm-hmm. I am attending auditions every now and then, just try and get my foot in the door and hope for the best. Um, I do attend Disney auditions as well, and I attend uh, auditions for musicals. Um, but other than that, I'm just trying to see where I'll go. I'm still fairly new to the world. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've got a, uh, a clear uh, idea, though, of the direction you want to go in, and uh, uh, you're heading down there um, quite steadily, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, a lot, especially when a lot of us are kind of, we might have an idea, but we just don't uh, take those steps toward it, even the small ones, because it's almost a bit too scary. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations on that. But um, uh, when did you, uh, when perhaps uh, did you start moving in this uh, direction that eventually became uh, Ever After Parties? Did you, uh, was there sort of like um, a, a first children's party that you did? <laughs> and how did that come about? Oh, my goodness. Uh t- working girl would love to hear this she would laugh uh we we actually um we met each other through working for another business um so my love for disney world i had a dream to work at disney world ever since grade eight and when i was in grade 10 or 11 sometime like last year the year before i can't remember uh oh yes uh august last year around then i think it was um I joined a company and that did, uh, you know, children's parties and all that. And I believe they started up not long before I joined them. And this is where, of course, I met Twerken Gherkin, which is, she's a part of my cast. Uh, she's been with us ever since, uh, you know, <laughs> we started. Um, so I actually did a party as... Anna. I did a party as Anna. That was my very first party I ever did. Um, and oh my goodness, I was so shy. You would not believe I'm the same person I am today. <laughs> I was so shy and I was actually, they, they were going to take the job off me. They actually didn't accept me at first, but I begged them. I said, no, trust me. I'm the girl you want. You want me. I promise. And if you don't want me, I will make you want me. I'm, I'm suited for this job, I promise you. And after that, I, I realized, I was like, oh, okay, this is a little scarier than I thought, and I am going to be extremely sick after this because there's children coughing in my face. <laughs> so <laughs> so I did the party, and uh, the feedback from the parents was fantastic, but of course, the person I was working for didn't see the same. Uh, then I asked them for another chance, and then I tried out Elsa. Um and I found that Elsa is not more so me, but she gives me the confidence. Elsa yeah. for sure gives me the confidence. She's the most, uh, she's like Cinderella, very regal, very mature, very aware of herself. Ah. Um, so I did uh, performances her, and um, I remember blowing away the lady that I worked for because this child, she was so shy. And then I went up to her and I actually introduced myself in Japanese because she couldn't speak English. And the child was just blown away. What? Elsa speaks Japanese? No way. <laughs> and of course I used her, you know, my past experience with anime to help with this. <laughs> um, but yes. And then I performed at Tiddlywinks, which is a play center, which does daily discos. I tried out Anna there. And then my last party with them was as Rapunzel. Now, this is where I did my party with Twerk and Gherkin, of course, and she was uh, Cinderella. And that's when we decided, okay, their focus here is big 
loud characters. Mm. Now, when I was Elsa, I wasn't allowed to be reserved. I was meant to be, be out there, be big, you know, the kids want to see big. And I was like, <laughs> but that's not Elsa. Mm. And that's where both Twerkengerk and, and I realized, okay, we have, we have different ideas of how we should be portraying these characters. And I wanted to be extremely authentic. I... I wanted to stick true to the character so the children felt as though it wasn't, oh, I had a lady dressed as Elsa come to my party. No, it was, I had Elsa at my party. Mm. What? No way. Yeah, Elsa. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I wanted to give to the kids. I didn't want to just, I don't know. I I see a lot of uh, Elsas in mascot costumes twerking at it. I don't know if you've seen those videos running around, but I have, and that is just far from what I wanted to be. I wanted to be, uh, I was about to make an aerial joke, be where the people are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be extremely authentic, and I wanted to give off the same vibe that you would feel if you were to visit the parks, and that's that's sort of why I started out. Mm. No, it, uh, thankfully, I will say, I missed out on those videos. I just sort of, like uh, that you were describing it as thinking, Elsa? Twerking? Uh, really? Oh, you're not missing out on much. <laughs> Thank God for that. Okay. Um, so, yes, uh, you and Twerk and Gherkin, who, uh, folks, in case uh, you might have missed the odd mention I made of her in previous uh, podcasts, uh, is a cosplayer whom I do hope to get on the show sometime soon. Uh, especially uh, now she... Uh, you two were basically effectively co-founders from the sounds of it of ever after parties um how did how did that idea of suddenly um uh if you'll forgive the par- the comparison um uh that venkman moment when you sort of look into each other and go uh uh our destiny is to go into business for ourselves um <laughs> how did you go from that to you know actually embracing the reality of of starting your own business and what were what were some of the first things you did and perhaps some of the first hurdles that you hit? Ooh, well, uh, this one was a coincidence. I know we were talking about earlier how, um, it, it, you know, it, was, it felt like it was meant to happen, that this was sort of the path I was meant to go to. But this was definitely a coincidence. One day I logged onto Facebook and I saw that I had a friend request. Uh, not unusual. I was like, okay, random people adding me. Great. So I looked at it and I noticed her picture. Her name was Emily. And I noticed her picture was of Princess Belle. And I went, wait a minute. Okay, let, let's check her out. So I added her and I went through her profile and it turns out, no way. She she owned a princess company. Oh my goodness. She, she does what I do, but it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so... I started talking to her, and uh, if I if I didn't meet this lovely woman, she lives in Melbourne. If I didn't meet her, oh my goodness, I would not be where I am today. Um, she sort of convinced me. She went, "Okay, so you have a different view. You you know, you obviously have different goals in this industry than the person you are hired by. So why don't you just break it off and you hit it off yourself? You know, start up your own business and." That was sort of the turning point. I went, wait, I can do that? And she's like, yeah, of course you can. And me, oh, I've got, I should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, me being a 17-year-old, at the time I was 16, I believe, um, me being so young, I was like, no, I can't do that. Businesses are for old people. They're for, you know, you got to be legally up. You know, of age, you gotta be old, you gotta have knowledge, you gotta have experience, you gotta live life. But, um, she said, no, you don't. I, I know so many people that have already started and they're your age. And I was like, wow, okay. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do I do now? She's like, okay, well, you gotta tell them. I was like, right, okay. Can I put that off? And she's like, no, you, you gotta tell them. So, after about a week after I made this decision, and of course I, I uh, hadn't told anyone yet because that would probably affect my employment status. I, I didn't want her to quite buy me until I was sure. I was like, oh, no, this is such a big gamble. Um, but uh, it was probably about a week after I decided I told them, and then I started collecting costumes. And, of course, at the time, I happened to have 
a dress ready for formal and it looked exactly like Elsa's dress, except without the massive, you know, three meter long cape. Uh, <laughs> it looked exactly like Elsa's dress and that was sort of the starting point and that was the first costume I used for Ever After Parties um, and it wasn't until then I started, you know, collecting all these costumes. I did have Alice from Alice in Wonderland, uh, the original uh, had that sitting around and of course I took that to my advantage to add that as another character to my lineup. That uh, was one uh, one heck of a start. So I mean things, I mean you're always uh, you're a cosplayer of course sort of by then so you know you I presume there were other costumes uh, in your wardrobe as well that you could work with. Was that right or was it just those two? Um, by then, I I sort of only had I had a Miku cosplay, I had the Lucky Star one, I had ah. the Mitsu one, and then uh, what else did I had? I had the Alice one, of course. I had another Alice one, which was inspired by the Tim Burton version. Um, mm. uh, speaking about saying the word um, it was the um costume, the red court costume. Ah. Uh, I had that one. <laughs> <laughs> um what else did I have? I've actually sold off a lot of my old costumes now uh, to raise funds for my business. But um, ooh, if I think of – oh, Chi from Showbits. I did her as well. <laughs> of course, many, many would have. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. What else did I do? I'm not sure. If, mm. if I think of them, I'll let you know. But, no yes, worries. those were the main ones. But Alice was pretty much the first Disney one I had, but Elsa was the first one I added specifically for my business. Right. So you'd made this decision to get started. You told your uh, then employer what you were doing and presumably uh, the parting of the ways in that regard uh, was amicable. Um it was, wasn't it? Everything sort of went fairly smoothly there? Um, she didn't <laughs> like it, because uh, at the at the time I was actually, uh, I've now found out through uh, the, uh, remember how I said earlier, the play center I performed at? Mm. Yes, he said that I was the favorable performer there, uh, and he heard that from the person herself that works there. <laughs> Try not to give me names. Um, but yes, I was favourable, so she was really sad to let me go. Yeah. So she had to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it, it was a little bit of a messy parting seeing as she was very sad to see me go. And uh, unfortunately, as leaving and starting at my own business, it did make me a competitor. Yeah. So, and unfortunately, due to the person she was, that it was in her nature to be competitive. Mm. So, unfortunately, we aren't still friends or anything like that, but we mm. did try our best yeah. to um, part in a positive way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tell me a little bit more about those uh, first few uh, days and weeks and, I would guess, month or two when um, you were working out what came next. Uh uh, that time, I guess, between uh, deciding to make a go of it and actually organising your first uh, party as ever after parties. Ooh, okay. So, funny story, this. Uh, the first thing I figured out was, what do I name it? <laughs> and I sat there for three days, all days at school, doing nothing but trying to figure out that name and drawing up all these different versions of the logo. I was like, nah, that's not right. This nah, 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 yeah, <laughs> nah, oh, this one. And I finally settled on one I really liked. And uh, at the time, I had a teacher who was very much into musical theatre, and I went up to her and said, Miss, 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 you will not believe what's just happened to me. What? I made a decision. Ooh, to do what? To start my own business. She said, do you have the money for that? I said, no, but I'll get it. <laughs> so um, I decided on the name, and from there on, I went, okay, what is my mission statement? And in my training um, my training manual, I do have my mission statement, and it's in the second page. I always put my mission statement everywhere, and so it's sort of, it's sort of like – very oh, quickly, yes. um, training manual. So this is a manual for new – uh, performers who join the company, is that right? Yes. Aha. I just, I had to clarify that just to, uh, uh, just to make sure. Anyway, uh, please, so in, um, uh, the mission statement, which is in the first few pages of your training manual and in as many other places as possible, uh, uh -huh. what is it? 
Okay, so the mission statement is split up into three. Uh, our commercial motto is where dreams come true, but our mission statement is separated into three things, and this is three things that we really want to guarantee here at Ever After Parties, and the first one is great quality. We want to provide highly talented and capable performers to handle every sort of event from, uh, say, a pool party to a birthday party or perhaps a shopping mall meet and greet. Um, the second one is affordability. We believe that no child should ever grow up without meeting some sort of princess or prince or superhero at least once in their life, whether it's at movie world, whether it's at Disney, whether it's at their birthday party. We believe that that's, that's really something they should experience in their life. Um, and childhood is nurtured by dreams and you never know how important those dreams are to a child's future. Um, I believe in, you know, uh, nurses, uh, it's nature versus nurture. And I believe that, you know, nurturing a child is what brings them up to be who they are. And I believe that that experience, having someone to look up to, a, a positive role model, is something that's really important for a child. And the third one is great memories. We try to create memories that will last an absolute lifetime. Like, I can still remember my third birthday now. I had, I had such a ball at the birthday. Um, it is important that, you know, the magic never ends and the children always remember um, something that may have, you know, changed their lives like it changed mine. That is an incredible lot of focus and heart that you've managed to pack into that mission statement. It, um, I don't know, nowadays when everyone seems to be writing mission statements that focus on uh, being the best in the field and all that kind of thing. It's nice to actually, nice to hear one that is, that's really about um, the way you want, I suppose, the way you want others to, of course, feel experiencing the service you provide, but also, you know, the kind of business that you you want to be a part of rather than, you know, the, the kind of business that will be a, a maximum money-making venture for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's another reason why the... Um, oh, how to word it, but, uh, the event managers for, you know, charities and everything and the, the wish makers, uh, make a wish, um, that's why they tend to prefer us over a lot of other businesses because with a lot of other businesses, um, that is primarily their focus. It's to make quick cash and it's really not quick cash, especially when you're investing, um, in high quality costumes and that's why another reason great quality is a part of my mission statement because I want to offer authentic princesses. I don't want to drop down to the nearest party city or the nearest costume store and get a $60 Elsa dress. No way in hell would I pass that off. Mm. Um, I have, oh, I've spent, you know, a lot of my time and a lot of the money uh, to get these fantastic costumes and I'm constantly upgrading. I'm never, you know, never set on one thing, never happy with the one thing. I have to always improve and I believe that, you know, there's always this this image that you got to try and replicate, but sometimes you got to try and make it better. You know, you look at the original thing, you go, "Wow, that that ball gown is fantastic," but how can we make it better? Mm. You know, mm. so I'm constantly trying to uh, provide the highest quality I can, and in doing that, that that's a mixture of you know having heart. The performers have a lot of heart. They do. They volunteer for so many events per year, and it's it's fantastic to see these girls are so enthusiastic about it, and they don't ask a single dollar for those charity events. It's mm. wonderful, and you can see them that the charity events actually twerk in Gherkin's favorite thing to do for the business. It is in fact doing those sort of events because uh, she's told me she says I don't actually like birthday parties that much. I really like doing the big meet and greets. I love it. I love seeing the smile on their face and I like, even if it's for a brief moment, you know, I get to meet these wonderful people and it's just so carefree and it's wonderful and you just immerse yourself in that character and, you know, even if it's for a brief moment, their dreams are coming true. Yeah. No, it's, uh, sounds like a fantastic thing and, um, I'm glad you guys have been able to make that part of, you know, uh, your lives as something that you can keep doing and that supports itself. Um, so tell me, um, I'll have to get back to the charity events, of course, but uh, uh, tell me what actually, uh, especially as, as you've mentioned, you are in your late teens. Are you still at school? Yes, I am, and it is extremely difficult to juggle the mix. Mm. I literally just did my QCS test, I think it was 
last week last week it was um i had a really jam-packed last week um of course I, i'm uh, it was september 2nd and 3rd we had qcs on the 4th i had a big event at red bank plaza <laughs> and I took the day off school for that. I asked for the principal's permission because he is aware of my business and what I do. Uh, we had a big event there and um, took the whole day off for that. It was 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wow. Really long day. Mm, mm. <laughs> Lots of um, hours in wigs and heels and ball gowns. It was – I was I was out for the next day. I was like, Nope. Not going, not moving. <laughs> I'm staying right here. So, um, and then straight up on the Saturday as well, on the 6th, we, oh, was it the 5th? Let me check. That's my calendar. 5th, yes, 5th. Um, on the 5th, it was like, okay, I have another event today. I have had such a jam packed week. You know, I had, it was like exam week as well. So I had, English on Monday, English exam, and then I had a maths exam on Friday, and then I had the event on Thursday, then QCS on the um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I had the event on Saturday, and here we are today. Wow. <laughs> a couple of days after all of that, and I am so tired. You can see the circles under my eyes. Uh, well, I can't because, of course, this is an audio-only chat, so... Uh, oh, yeah, but, yeah, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, now one thing I do want to clarify for those folks who might be uh, listening from outside Queensland uh, or even outside Australia... Um, and because I, uh, of course, did my high schooling in New South Wales, what exactly is the QCS and what importance does it have in a Queensland student's life? Oh, it's my favourite test. You know, it's so chillax. Oh, it's fantastic. You know, I would do it every day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, it's... um. Oh. Grab all the course... is sort of like a fundamental core skills test. Grab everything you learn in school... Try and remember it and shove it all into one test. Oh. Uh, they ask really weird questions. Oh, my gosh. They were asking about velocity and having a plane take off and an you know, airway strip. Um, talking about fertilized percentages. Oh, it was so weird. I, I remember I had to draw some next part of a comic in it as well. I was like, what? <laughs> For all the non-artists out there, they're probably sitting there crying. They're like, oh, well, I've failed. I'm not going to uni. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, um, oh, there was such weird content in there. And it was nothing that you – the questions are different every single year. And it was – you would never be able to predict uh, what you were doing in QCS. And your QCS – test essentially uh, gives you your OP score and your OP score is a ranking that you need um, to get to get into university straight after school. Um, you of course don't have to have this but it is the easiest way to get into university. Um, so essentially your OP is gathered from about 50% of it is gathered from your QCS mark and uh, fifty percent of it is gathered from your grades, from your subjects. Um, so that's all your assessments and your exams. Uh, so then, in the end, you get your OP, and then you apply for which course you want to do at which uni, and you put in your preferences along with your OP mark. And it sort of just gives universities and lecturers um, a way to figure out, okay, okay, how well did they go in school? Okay, I think I want these people. You know, they got the higher marks. Well, these people not not so high. You know what mm. I mean? And it kind of gives them a way to tell um, which people they should let into the course. So of course, it's um, <laughs> a really important thing um, for mm. someone in grade twelve to pass. Yeah. So um, uh, to ch to ask about university, do you have any particular aspirations for uh, campus or coursework that you'd like to be doing? Ooh. Um, actually, I have to put in my preferences at the end of September. Oh. Uh, it's uh, 20th, 20th of September, and I have, I've been stuck on this ever since I started high school. Oh, well, um, I tell you what, it is a very, it, it's a, I almost, I'm almost tempted to take the question back because it's a very, uh, what grown ups ask kids question. It's almost as if, you know, that's all they're interested in finding out, not, <laughs> um, not what they what the kid is actually really interested in and what they love doing and the things that are really important to the kid. It's like, oh yeah, 
what university are you going to go to? What are you going to be studying? What what job are you going to be doing when you grow I'm up? I'm going to like, be a you know, ballerina. This youngster, <laughs> you you are to you have even though you've got no idea of life or what you want to do, you are by now to have the rest of your existence planned out, and it's it's insane. So I tell you what, we will <laughs> skip that question. And... Yeah, why not? I, I, I've had all planned out. You know, I know what's going to happen uh, all the way up to ninety. I'm, yeah, I'm going to mm. live till ninety, by the way, and I know exactly what I'm going to do every single day. Yep, <laughs> I've planned that. I've, I'm that old man jokes i'm really not <laughs> so anyway i mean i definitely don't want to be that kind of grown up so uh uh anyway uh, we were one of the things i i had to kind of uh, smile about was you asking uh your principal for time off so that you could go do this venture <laughs> and the thought kind of ran through my head uh i mean on the one hand you'd sort of think of a principal letting a a child have a day off school not because they're real or anything like that because they want to go and do this businessy thing of theirs, and then you sort of think, hang on a second, if the purpose of school is to produce <laughs> a person who is sane and capable and savvy and confident enough in themselves and skilled enough in themselves to venture out into the business world and the world of earning an income on their own terms, then surely there is no greater indicator than <laughs> a, a, a teenager who has already got their own venture going and is saying, I need to take time to be able to go and work and make money and, you know, build my business. You'd almost, you'd almost think as long as um, you do demonstrate that you do know what you're doing, any principal worth their salt would be, would basically look at you and go, right, take the time, go for it. <laughs> you go it, do right? that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um... But then again, also, um, in my business class, I've always gotten the top grades in my business class. Uh, um, and actually, um, I was the event coordinator for this year's um, annual art auction. We, As a school, we raise a lot of money for World Vision. We're actually the uh, top fundraiser, uh, fundraising school for World Vision in all of Queensland, maybe even Australia, I'm not sure. All I know is B105 gave us a really fancy award for it. Um, <laughs> well, congratulations, um, you folks. <laughs> yeah, oh. our school worked really hard um, to try and raise money because, um, as you can probably see, uh, that's where I get a lot of my heart from, yeah. from the school. As I said, you know, um, nature versus nurture, I do believe that the way you're brought up sort of gives you your morals and that's probably where a lot of a lot of my heart comes from definitely mm. from uh what my principal preaches he, he has fantastic sets of morals um uh, his name is um mr thompson paul thompson i believe some of your listeners may have seen him on um on television he is frequently actually on television um but you know that's a completely different subject. Um, <laughs> that I'll be here for ages if I talk about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, coordinated the event for that, and it was we donated art. So all the artists in the school got together and they uh, donated lots and lots of art pieces. I believe we had oh, probably about in the eighties. That's how many art pieces we had. Um, and even ones that got damaged during transport, they all sold as well. And uh, we made a couple grand. It was, I believe it was about eight grand at the art auction. Um, so, yeah, I completely coordinated that event. And he, he of course, the principal knew about that. Um, and I've, uh, I've done a lot of projects and he's been very involved in them. He's known, he's always known about what I'm up to and I'm always letting him know, you know, how the business is going type thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's always checking up on how I'm going. It's not only, you know, on a personal level, but also to check how my schooling's going, you know, and, um, our principal's very one on one with the students. He knows them all by name. Um, and he doesn't just know their name. He knows, like, their story. He knows who they are. He knows all their personalities. You know, he frequently makes jokes. He passes me in the shopping centre sometimes. He goes, hey, and he cracks a joke. You know, he's, he's very personal with his students. I think that's – he probably gave me a lot of my morals and, you know, influenced how I run my business. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Well, speaking of running your business, it has been going for 10 months now, uh, since November 2014. Um, how has that been? What is the actual experience of running this business for almost a year 
uh, been like and what have, uh, what have you discovered about the realities of running a business? Um, if I could describe it in like three words, it'd be scary, frustrating, but fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, easily. Um, oh, it has been an extremely uh, head spinning, just it shook my entire world upside down. It's been a crazy experience. Like, no roller coaster in the world can compare to the ride I've been on for this business. I've, you know, I've gained friends, lost friends, you know, um, and I've just opened up this entire new world. You know, in the world, in the words of Jasmine and Aladdin, a whole new world, literally, it is like, whoa, I've never seen this side of things before. <laughs> um, and it's just, oh, it's fantastic. And it's just, I couldn't have it any other way. And if, if I could recommend something to anyone in the world, if you want something different and you want a different experience and you really want to shake your life up, invest in a business. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, if you really if you're really that bored with your life, definitely find the first thing that you love, whether it's whether it's games, whether it's mopping floors, or whether you like selling vacuums, go ahead, do it. Like seriously. If you think it's boring and you want to shake your life up, do it right now. Start a business. You, like, you're upset from heartbreak? Start a business. <laughs> um, you have nothing to do and you have no money and you're sitting there like, what do I do now? Start a business. Like, seriously, <laughs> just, I recommend it. Um, I started with nothing. Mm. Actually, um, I started with a formal dress and a couple of costumes from my cosplay. And here I am. I actually... A great thing that one of my teachers actually taught me how to do is spend other people's money. And uh -huh. I know it sounds awful. It's not literally taking the money out of people's hands and going, give me your money, like stealing a candy from a child, but <laughs> which I would never do. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like you book a party, you make your money, and you invest. That's investing is spending other people's money and is the best and wisest thing you could do. Like, honestly, I wouldn't have all these costumes if I didn't spend other people's money like oh my mm. goodness that was that's probably the biggest thing I've been taught in school <laughs> how, to, how to do that like uh, the teacher that taught me that he actually he does property investment and he went okay I'm gonna buy an apartment right outside the university because I know that's where people are gonna really want to book that out they're really going to want to live there and they're going to be there for a couple of years because courses go for a couple of years okay i'm not making too much money from that what can i do okay what do teenagers love junk food where do you get that vending machines he put a vending machine at the bottom of the apartment and pretty soon he was earning more money from the vending machine than he was earning rent from you know the apartment <laughs> so a very clever man taught me very clever things <laughs> mm, oh absolutely no that's uh, that was a, a a stroke of genius and definitely um knowing his market and i perhaps looking at it uh, uh thinking laterally as well because i mean uh, i've got to admit my first thought would have been uh, decorate, decorating the apartment somehow, but no, but junk food downstairs. <laughs> so when they come in and out and they've, they've got some spare coins on them, they just go, ooh, I... We don't come up from the really, city, really, but it's a good idea. <laughs> I could really go a Mars bar right now. There's one! <laughs> conveniently, here's one I prepared earlier. Mm. You know, and it's just conveniently right there. You don't have to go anywhere. I mean, I probably shouldn't promote that on this show, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> But, oh, my gosh, it is a genius idea. And mm. I think, yeah, as I said, yeah, my school's definitely influenced how I run my business. I mean, as I've explained in, like, the last 10 minutes, you know, my principal, my teacher, um, my teacher in grade 8, you know, the musical teacher. Oh, all, all these people definitely influence how I run it. Mm -hmm. So um, if there were three things that you've learned in your time running a business that you didn't know when you started out – that you think would really help somebody who was, uh, who is now, where you are about 10, 12 months ago, what would those three things be? So if they were looking to do what I do, is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, if, well, if they were cosplayers and looking at um, some way of starting a business based around their love, or perhaps even, you know, starting their own uh, uh, cosplay party-based firm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, first one would be do not start your business until you have everything ready. 
okay. I did not do that. I started and I went, oh, great. Okay, I need this. Oh, wait, no, I need that. Oh, whoops. Oh, should have assured that. But, you know, um, everything's all sorted out now. But, um, yes, definitely check out the legalities of that. I know there are a lot of businesses, particularly in Queensland, not only in this industry, but they do perform under the books and, you know, they're dodging tax and all this. And I'm telling you right now, it's not worth the pressure. It's not worth anxiety. And just really, that should be the first thing that you sort out. Do not avoid it. Cause when you really finally go, okay, I want to, I want to do this legally. I want to be right about it. You've already stacked up everything. You're like, oh, all right. I got to be careful because I could get in trouble. So you really need it. That's the first thing you should be doing, sorting out the legalities to do with it, making sure you write up contracts which will protect your little booty um, <laughs> mm. from getting in trouble. And, of course, writing up um, contracts for parties, for release forms, if you do take photos of parties, um, sorting out, you know, ABN, uh, your tax file number if you don't already have one, um, insurance for your performers. So that would lead on to my next thing. If you are looking at working with other people, be very, very careful about who you have. Um, as I said earlier, Twerking Gherkin, uh, she's been with me through this entire trip and she is the person I can really fall back on. And, you know, I rely on her a lot. I rely on her for any financial decisions I make, um, any opinions, I always ask her for them. And she's definitely helped me through this. Um, but I didn't get that friendship, you know, until I started the business and until I started working in that industry. Mm. So what I would really recommend is if you can help it, minimize the amount of friends you bring into it. Don't go, oh my gosh, this is great. Hey, Sally, this is, do you want to join in? I mean, I know you're not all that qualified and I know you just like, you know, you think you can think that you really can't, but that's okay. We can do it anyway. Mm. Come on. You're my best friend. I love you. Come on. Uh, no, don't bring your friends into business. It's, I've had a lot of, you know, other princesses in America. Um, they're like, I told you so, you know, so don't bring friends into it. Just makes a lot of trouble <laughs> and it's not worth all the hassle, especially when things go wrong or they're not quite what you're looking for. Definitely avoid it, especially even if, even if it's not particularly what I do that you want to go into, even if it's just you're cosplaying like uh, like Jessica does, Jessica Negri or Yaya mm. Han. Um, I'm sure some people at Comic-Con are going to be very excited to meet her. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, I'm very keen for that. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, especially even if you're doing stuff like that, try not to bring friends into it when you can help it because business and friendship should stay on separate levels. Mm. Uh, third piece of advice. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with the first one, um, jumping into it unprepared. So, no, earlier I said, you know, oh, if, if you got, you know, your life's a mess right now, jump into a business. Okay. You know, it sounds very literal, like jump straight into it, but... That doesn't mean you're a startup right now. We're selling stuff right now. Mm. It means you start getting into it. And getting into it is also getting that experience. So what I would recommend, if you, if this is really what you want to pursue and you, you really think you can, you know, run a business and you really want to use this, you know, uh, make some money from what you really love, I would recommend working for someone else first. That's, that's really what I did. And from, Working with someone else first, it, you can see what they've done wrong, what they've done right, what you like about it and what you don't like. Um, working with someone else kind of tells you everything about what your ideals would be. Working with someone else structures your business for you. So whether that means working, you know, uh, auditioning for Disney, going to work at the Hong Kong Resort, whether that means going over there, working for a bit, coming over here and use your knowledge from Disney, whether it just means that or whether you, in the past, you ran a business, perhaps it wasn't relative to what you do, but you can use, you know, the experience there, um, or perhaps there's a business that exists that does what you want to do, even if they're not quite what you what you like or what you would like to be doing, go for it. I, I would I would definitely recommend working for someone else first because it's like. Um, trying to think of an example uh parents 
when parents go, oh, back in my day, I, I did this and I kissed a million boys and I would not do that, you know. And you go, oh, mom, seriously, I'm not going to listen to you. Why would you know anything? You say you know better, but you don't. I know better. You mm-hmm. know, Ponzo knows best. Um, but no, definitely listen to people who have done it before or Take note of people who are doing it and you will notice their faults and you'll be able to learn from past experiences. Mm, so, mm. yeah, those are definitely my three top tips. And I would yeah. definitely say number three is the most important. And then mm. number one would be second important, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if anyone were, after hearing this episode, uh, thinking it would be a great idea uh, to engage ever after parties for their next event whether it be a charity service or a kids party or uh, something else where can they find you and your business oh um ever after parties qld.weebly.com so very soon we'll be changing that to .com.au but I assure you you'll probably find it under Weebly at the moment. Um, so that's Ever After Parties, QLD, dot Weebly, dot com. Um, and basically you go in there and we have all our information popped up on there and you'll find it's a very easy process. And if you ever do get confused, if you find it in the FAQ, there's a step-by-step process on how to book us. And it actually has clickable links to tell you where to go for everything if, you, you know, if you're not too uh, computer savvy or anything like mm. that. Oh, and another thing, um, we are actually currently hiring right now. Right. <laughs> so for any cosplayers who have a particular interest in the arts, um, we are hiring. So if, if you can sing and act and you like dressing up, you know, we're, we're hiring at the moment. And you, know, you can find all that information um, on our website or you can find it on our Facebook, which is the same, Ever After Parties. Um but, you know, even just Googling that, you'll find it straight up. It's one of the first suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. Shana, it has been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. Thank you very much again for your time and your enthusiasm, particularly. No I, worries. <laughs> I reckon that, um, uh, you know what... Uh, uh, one of the things you sort of mentioned a little earlier on just then was when you know what it's like with parents when they tell you, um, you know, don't do these things when I was a kid and whatever. And one thing I think perhaps parents and maybe sometimes advice givers tend to forget is the person who is perhaps looking to you for advice, especially if they're a kid and you're their parent, they look at you and you are the most awesome person in the world. Uh Especially, and in your particular regard, of course, you know, you are most likely not a, a, a mum yet, or at least not a, not a mum of a child. <laughs> oh, yes, who's I young have enough seven be... children. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Who do you think I do all the parties for? <laughs> exactly. uh, no, I don't but, have any. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then again, but, um, uh, you know, uh, on one hand, it's, it's tempting to say, you know, don't make the mistakes I did. But when someone is looking at you and going, but you survived. And you thrived, and you're fantastic. You know, it's like they those mistakes didn't kill you. It's uh, they um, made you stronger. You learn from them. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But uh, yes, uh, in that regard, you know, you are you're still in high school. You're ten months into your own business, and as um, I'm sure many adults tell uh, many kids, the world seems to be your oyster. And I have been. Um, privileged to be able to chat with you uh, about the thing that you love doing and at this stage of your life and hopefully at some point in the future I can get you back on to uh, uh, compare notes and um, see how things have been going in the meantime. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. (laughs) I would actually be really up for that. It was lovely talking to you. I license the interview and monologue content of the Paid to Play podcast under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 Unported License. That roughly means you can sample, remix and redistribute it as long as you tell people that the bits of it you use came from Rob Farker and don't charge anyone for your work. For the full legal text go to creativecommons.org. 
The theme music is written, performed by, copyright and used with the kind permission of Miracle of Sound. All rights reserved. For more great music inspired by geek culture, check out miracleofsound or one word, dot net. This podcast is hosted by Business Web Integrations. Get in touch with them at businesswebintegrations or one word, dot com, dot au, to discuss your web hosting and business needs.